For this hour, Vice President Kamala Harris gaining momentum and the race for the White House, crisscrossing through five key battleground states alongside her newly minted running mate, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz. With Election Day just 85 days away, enthusiasm for the Democratic tickets continues to soar since President Biden dropped out of the race. New York Times seeing a college poll shows Harris leading Trump by four points in Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Michigan, which is still within the margin of error. Meanwhile, Trump upping his attack on his Democratic competitor for mocking her intelligence and lashing out at this new polling. The former president even falsely claiming Harris used artificial intelligence to create images of fake crowds. And joining me now, ABC News senior reporter Catherine Falders, along with senior reporter Emmanuel Saliba, who breaks down all the things related to artificial intelligence. All right, Catherine, we'll start with you. Where do things stand in the race for president? Harris got a big boost after wrapping up her first major campaign blitz. Yeah, she certainly did. And it's clear, DeMarco, that she is gaining momentum in the race for the White House. As you know, uh, she just wrapped up that tour of battleground states last week with her uh, newly picked running mate, Tim Walls. And, and you mentioned this at the top, but what, what's important here is while it is in the margin of error, those important swing states, uh, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, uh, and Michigan, it shows that Harris does have a four-point edge over Donald Trump in the margin of error, but important because that's where she has been going and where Donald Trump hasn't been going. Trump says, oh, the swing states will be easy. He doesn't have to go there. He already has them locked up. But uh, according to the polls, he doesn't. They're within the margin of error. Of course, uh, he will probably need to go to those soon. Well, the other thing here that's interesting, to me at least, on where this race stands, is you've seen this massive shift in enthusiasm since Harris, of course, has launched her campaign. That's up 27 points, by the way, from the Democratic ticket of what it used to be. So there certainly is that edge. Now, whether she holds that, of course, with her running mate, Tim Walsh, is to be determined. Of course, they've just wrapped up uh, that week in those swing states campaigning, but it certainly is a big shift in terms of enthusiasm in this race. Catherine, Trump is also sharpening his attacks on Harris, now spreading false claims that she doctored some of the photos. Uh, what's the latest there? Yeah, and Emmanuel is the expert here on this. But what this is coming from, of course, is as uh, the crowd sizes uh, at Harris's rallies have grown, and, and we've been seeing those images of that, Trump essentially shared a photo saying that actually uh, one of the photos um, was, was doctored and there was no uh, crowd. That's the photo you see there, that there was no crowd at this particular rally. Well, uh, we know, at least according to a Harris campaign official, that it was taken by a Harris campaign staffer and that it was not modified in any way. Uh, of course, this comes as Trump in recent weeks has been making these baseless claims that the Harris campaign pays for her crowd, um, of course, as Harris has gained uh, momentum with these large scale rallies. All right, let's bring in our expert in AI. Emmanuel, what's your take on this? Well, this image has been circulating for about a week online, and those claims have been circulating, but they were only picked up by Trump on Sunday. But I want to show you a side-by-side, -side because I actually spoke to the Harris campaign yesterday. They sent me the original image, which was taken by one of their, their um, staffers, and you can see it right now on television. On the left, that's the original that was taken by the staffer. And on the right is the online version. You know the difference between the two? I can't tell the difference. No. A filter. Oh, a wow. filter on your iPhone. That's the difference between the two. Wow. But what the original image allows us to do is to check the metadata. So if we pull that up on the next slide, we're going to see where and when and how this image was taken. You can see it was taken on August 7th at 6.28 PM in Detroit but using an iPhone 12 Pro Max. Right, so we have the we know now that it's an authentic image, even though we've you know our ABC News team here had verified it, had looked at the crowd sizes, just like Catherine described. We can match the crowd sizes with other verified sources. We can also tell that this is authentic by getting the original mm. image from the source and checking the metadata. And these on the screen are other images taken by that staffer that was there. So it wasn't just a single image. He sent us about six um, and, and videos alongside with it. So do you see this becoming a bigger problem, especially with the election? I mean, we're just, what, 80-something days away? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is what we've been fearing. You know, experts in this field have been fearing that because AI is getting so good at replicating reality, you can now deny reality. Politicians can now use it to deny reality. And that's why it's so important for us to show the evidence, how images were taken, how we know they're real and authentic. All right, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Catherine Falders and Emmanuel Saliba. Good to see you guys. All right, meanwhile,